Hello, I'm going to do a review on the Regal DL3021 series electronic loads. Uh, specifically, this is the A version, which denotes it has a little bit higher performance and also the full color screen. The firmware version of this review is version 1.04. I have this uh, Regal DL3021A connected to a Regal DP832 DC power supply that's right below. I'll uh, zoom out and show that in just a second. So I have been uh, pretty pleased with this uh, electronic load so far. Uh, it has a lot of the features that I want uh, and it does also have a few quirks that uh, probably could be easily fixed in a new firmware release. We'll see if that happens soon. Regal has four loads in their current lineup. We see the DL3021, a 3021A, a 3031, a 3031A. The 21 series parts are very similar uh, the A version has a little bit higher uh, performance and the full color screen. The 3031 series are rated at 350 watts versus 200 and similar. The A version has the LCD color, full color LCD screen and a few uh, little bit better uh, specifications. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I am my power source is the uh, Rigol DP832 power supply. It's a real workhorse, and you can see that the form factor between the load and the power supply is very similar. The depths are almost the same. Uh, they seem to be well built. They're heavy. Uh, no complaints about the construction. The electronic load has the standard functions of constant current, that's the CC, constant voltage, constant resistance, constant power. Um, so if I'm in constant current, I can set the current value right here, either by moving the cursor around and scrolling. So there's a half an amp or I can direct enter. So I just entered in half an amp and it displays how many watts and the simulated resistance. You can direct enter in the number and here's a little bit of a gotcha or a firmware bug. If I want to put a half an amp in here I must use a leading 0.5 if you put in point, say for example, if I wanted to put in 0 0.1 amps, if I just put in point 0.1, it will translate it to 1. So in my mind, we should be able to use a 0 point, a le leading 0, like a 0 0.1 or point 0.1, and it would work. This could be a little dangerous if you were to put in 0.25 amps, and it would be translated to 25 amps. Some of the features I really like are the pulse features. For example, I can put in a pulse and you will select the A and B uh, settings. This is the A setting, this is the B setting. I'm sorry, I got that mixed up and it seems backwards to me the static or the initial setting is B, A is the pulse. So right now uh, I'm going to set the A level to 2 amps, 2.0 and our B level is set for 1 
and I want a width of one second. Second. Apply. Now we'll note that the mode I was in constant current, say for example in static, if I want to get back into that pulse mode I need to hit apply. And so now we're in pulse. Let me show one more thing. Um, this is the trigger source and there's a couple of different options. Transient is associated with this button here. So I'll hit apply and what this will do is I'll turn on my load and when I hit transient it will apply that one second pulse. And we saw this go up and then come back down for one second. So I use that uh, when I'm designing uh, a say a DC to DC power supply that's pretty handy. Another nice feature is uh, this toggle transient. So I'm going to adjust my steady state to half an amp. 0 0.5 and I'll set my A level to 2 amps. Apply. So what this is going to do is when I hit the transient button it will apply that 2 amp load until I push the button again. So here we go. I'll push the transient there's our two amps. I'll push it again and it will toggle off. The load has a uh, view waveform button which is uh, pretty powerful. Uh, I can easily demonstrate that by going back into the pulse mode and let me hit apply. We're now in the pulse mode. I'll hit on. I'll go to view waveform and it defaults to the y-axis is amps and that's going to be hard for you to read but this is basically one amp I can hit the transient and it gave us that one second pulse let me change this time to 60 seconds and let me do that again and the time from here to here is approximately 60 seconds and this is about a 60th of that. Uh, another uh, interesting feature while you're in this mode is you can record to a thumb drive. Okay, it recognized the thumb drive and I can come into the next mode and hit record. You can see that this thumb drive is now blinking. I'll do that transient again. We can see the little teeny glitch there and so it's kind of slick uh, that it's recording data and it's in like a comma delimited form so you can easily pull it into a spreadsheet and it's going to give you ti a timestamp, current, voltage. Uh, however, it um, the sampling rate that it's logging to the USB thumb drive is not fixed and I think this might be a little bit of a bug uh, I it, it basically takes the screen width, does some math <laughs> that I haven't been able to figure out, and your sample rate might be two, three, four, maybe up to ten samples per second to the thumb drive. But a cool feature possibly could get fixed uh, so it's more deterministic in a later firmware version. 
We'll note that we're recording is note that it says record up here and we can see that my thumb drive is uh, flashing. Uh, if I come back into here into say just constant current we can see that the display still says record but obviously the thumb drive is not being active so this might be another little uh, firmware glitch um, it's not recording at this point the only time it actually records is when it's in this kind of strip chart mode Another uh, feature that I use quite often is the battery application. So what this is going to do for me is it will accumulate the battery capacity and I can choose to stop the test at a uh, predetermined voltage or current or time. So say for example I'm testing a single cell lithium battery I could I don't want to discharge the battery all the way down to zero because that can be dangerous so a lot of uh, lithium batteries have a built-in uh, over discharge circuit that might cut out at say 3 volts so I'm going to stop my test at 3 volts and I want to discharge say at half an amp and I'm just gonna let the test run. I'm not gonna worry about its time. I'm gonna adjust my power supply so that it looks like a, a uh, battery. So here's my fake uh, lithium battery. I can now put, turn the test on and we can see that a timer has started and it's starting to accumulate the watt hour, milliamp hour capacity of this battery. And uh, this is pretty slick. This makes battery testing really easy. So I'm going to adjust my power supply down here. and simulate that the battery capacity is lowering because the voltage is lowering. I'm gonna keep on clicking that down and it says battery test completed because it dropped down to the three volts and the timer stopped and it told us, is now telling us that our battery capacity is this many watt hours or this many milliamp hours. Pretty slick feature. Here's an interesting test that uh, is easy to perform. Uh, I have gotten frustrated many times in the past over sometimes my cell phone just doesn't want to charge, uh, doesn't charge fast, seems to be a lot of inconsistencies. So I tested some cables. So here's a cable. This is a USB-A to micro B. And I'll plug this in. And I'm wanting to fast charge. I have one amp load set up and we can see that I am getting only four point six seven volts at the load so uh, 0.3 volts is being dropped in the cable assembly and it's primarily uh, this cable a lot of phones will charge more slowly because they will throttle the amount of current they want to pull uh, if they see this voltage starting to drop so let's look at another cable Hmm, interesting. 
that this cable is 4.16 volts and so a pretty big drop a half a volt more drop across this cable versus the other cable so a while ago I took a lot of my cables and I put a little piece of red heat shrink around the end stating that I've tested it and I was happy with the uh, performance of the cable Another way to look at this is to uh, use the constant voltage feature of the uh, electronic load. So I still have my power supply set up for 5 volts and what I'm going to do is say I only want to live with a, f uh, a, two, a 0 0.2 volt drop across my cable and if I'm doing that what's the maximum amount of current I can pull and stay with that 200 millivolt drop. So I've entered in 4.8 volts. I'll hit on and it takes the power supply a second time. I think it's basically start, starts to ramp the current. Okay, here we go. And so it's going to ramp the current and dynamically change it to keep this voltage approximately at that 4.8 volts. So I can draw 0.65 amps through this cable. This is actually a cable made by Monoprice. It's a six foot cable. Here's the generic. Okay, it's starting to run the test. It's gonna start changing the current. There we go, 0.26 amps, uh, roughly a third the capacity. So there you have it. This cable could possibly charge your device three times faster than this cable. Depends on the scenario, but look at these two cables. The better performing cable is a much thinner cable and it's much more flexible and uh, it performs much better. Okay, well that's about it. There's tons of other features with this thing. Uh, it works well. Um, I've been pleased with its performance for the price and uh, it does have a few little firmware quirks that I think could be fixed, but uh, all in all it's a, it's a good value. I've been pleased with it. This is the Rigol or Regal DL3021A.